while I'd been in the US, John Roberts had been looking after the group. So I came back to find that we had a project in autonomous helicopters. Uh, dr drones as we know them today, uh, little things with four propellers or six propellers, they didn't exist then. Uh, so a drone then was something that looked like a helicopter, got a big main blade and a little, twi uh, little blade uh, on the back, uh, and petrol powered, and they were fitting computers and cameras and, and and, and doing cool things. So that was our first foray into, into, into drones. Uh, we also, this was the, the period we really started to diversify as a robotics group. So though we'd done a lot of work in mining and we continued to do work in mining, we did another phase of dragline automation, uh, kicked that up a notch. We actually did a field trial over a couple of weeks when we moved 250,000 tons of dirt. Uh, so this was a big robot. Over two weeks, moved quarter of a million tons of dirt. Uh, so it really showed that it was it was a feasible thing to do. Still doesn't exist in practice, uh, but you know I think at that point we showed that it was it it could be put into practice. Probably another mining crash happened. So the trouble with doing research that's uh, associated with the mining industry it's uh, peaks and busts, and uh, just when you get going there's a bust, and then you know, people get laid off and they reduce their spending and their ambition. So yeah, still, still not in practice. I think part of the, the motivation for moving, for diversifying was A, that we're working in a sector that has booms and busts. So we needed to have a broader portfolio. And the other thing I think is actually having worked at mine sites and looking at what open cut mining does to the environment. I mean, it is like being on the moon. It is so barren. And I think this is where we thought we need to sort of balance the karma and, and put something back. So we started getting interested in what could robots do for environmental monitoring. And that's when Matthew Dunbabin joined us and Matt started working on underwater robots, underwater vehicles, uh, with a particular focus on what, how they can be used for surveying the environment. How can you know, use these robots to monitor the health of the Great Barrier Reef or a water storage or a lake or something like something like that. And the aerial robots, you know, we're thinking about them, they could do surveying of mine sites, but they could also, you know, survey a forest or a field or or a Great Barrier Reef. So this was more, in, they were certainly very interesting areas of robotics. This is a, an area of robotics we call mobile robots. So these are robots that are not rooted to the floor. They can move through the environment using wheels, propellers, whatever, wings. Uh, it's lots of really interesting research problems, but also lots of really interesting applications that they can be applied to. So this was a big uh, flourishing of our robotics activity. Uh, we hired a lot more people over that period.